hard, right? I mean, it's okay. It's fair enough. It's a uh, safe to feel up yeah, it's, 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 I mean, even the FX prelims are great, too. It's a, it's a, it's a really good card. Yeah. Really happy with it. Antonio Silva obviously just got up there on the stair and he put his fist up in his face. Is that thing that we've seen as of late? Uh, you know, he got yeah. up the first time, but he looks, looks pretty confident. Yeah, he's a big guy. <laughs> even his lips are big, man. Everything is big on this guy. Man. I was looking at his head and his arms and his hands. He's a big dude. And the thing about, uh, you know, heavyweights, anytime heavyweights get in there, Interesting things happen. Speaking so, of heavyweight, you look like you lost, what, 25 pounds? <laughs> Looking good. Little, yeah. You got Thanks. a six-pack working? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but I'm, I, I'm down probably, I'm about 197 now Very nice. from 215. How much did it stress you out that Mark Hunt had those troubles, and, and how prepared were you to give Junior another fight or shelve him for a couple weeks? I mean, to say we weren't stressed would be ridiculous, but, you know, we had three, thank God he was coming in three weeks early, and it wasn't anything bad. It was that... He used the wrong passport. So his passport that he uses was down in uh, Australia with his wife, so she had to ship him. So the buy, so when she sent, the, when he used the other passport, he filled out a tourist visa. So with the Boston bombings, it's crazy getting in this country right now. And what just happened in London? I'm sure it's going to be even, I mean, it's just, it's getting crazier and crazier to, to travel now. So, you know, that's something that's definitely going to be, uh, you know, on our radar moving forward, getting guys into the country, making sure that they're, I mean, we, our team is on it anyway, but, you know, the more this, the, this horrible type of shit keeps happening, the worse it's going to get. And especially, I would think, you're doing more international shows, is that going to work in the opposite with, with the United States, you know, U.S. fighters going other places too? I don't know. I, I guarantee it's going to be tougher to get into London now, and England, you know, uh, but, I, I don't, you know, we'll see what happens. But we have a really, really good team that works on that. I mean, our stuff goes pretty smooth usually. Um, and uh, I, I was confident he was going to get in. You brought Boston really quick. I just want to touch on the top in the Bay Area. The UFC on Fox, you mentioned that you were going to go to Boston. Just wondering if you did that and how it went. I did, and it was great. It was, it was good. It was a great trip. Um, can you elaborate a little more? Um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I underestimated how, uh, you know, how, how messed up people were there still. And, uh, you know, I didn't get to do what I wanted to do, but I got to drop off some money. That's what I went there to do. How did you see Victor's performance in Brazil? What's that? Well, how did you see Vitor's performance in Brazil? And is, is he now a contender, yeah, a top contender? I mean, Vitor looked great. I mean, spinning back kick, he looked awesome. Is he a top contender? He is. And like his, his performance was kind of overshadowed by uh, the tier two situation. Right. Is he gonna? Uh, do you think that he's gonna fight even like on tier two? Listen, the whole TRT thing with Vitor has become just this huge. Just people going after Vitor Belfort is what they're doing. There's guys in here that are on TRT. TRT is legal. Everybody knows that. And Vitor Belfort was tested all the way, leading all the way up to that fight. He was tested during the fight, and we're waiting for those results to come back. And I'm. Positive, he's going to be fine. People are talking about like the commissions uh, in all other countries, for example, in Brazil. Uh, right. The commission is pretty brand new and like. Well, it's not brand new. But what's happening is it's, it's the same commission that stopped Gustafsson from fighting with that cut in Sweden. Same exact commission. They're talking like uh, before a doctor is on the board of the that's, commission. That's all conspiracy bullshit. Vitor Belfort followed the rules. He did everything that he was supposed to do. I'm not a fan of TRT. I don't like it, but I, you know. It's legal right now. Did you, you guys know, test him in addition to the commission, though? Because it sounded like you didn't. I remember you saying, we're going to test the oh, shit yeah. out of guys. Vitor was tested. Look, Vitor fine, was tested guys. leading up to that fight. And believe me, uh, you know, you, you guys know how Vitor is. Vitor doesn't want this, you know. He, he's, he's aggravated and pissed off about it. You know, right, John? Yeah. Um, you know, he's aggravated and pissed off about this stuff. He wants, he doesn't want his name to be smeared, you know. I, uh, I don't like TRT. I'm not a fan of it don't like it at all. And I said, you know, a while ago, these guys were going to be tested. And Vitor was tested. And Vitor followed the rules and did what he was supposed to do. So is is that a problem, this? though? Where, where are you going to put him on a card? Like, what place? Because no. some some places like Nevada said that they might have a problem licensing they, him. Why would Nevada have a problem Well, they said because he, he was busted before. Yeah, but he's on TRT. It's not that they're going to have a problem licensing him. They're, well, they're going to put him, uh, they're going to rake him over the coals is what they'll do. Well, they said they might not give him an exemption for the TRTs. 
why wouldn't they give him an exemption? Because it was past use. Which could well, be that's up to them. They'll have to go and do a hearing or however they want to do it. But you know, the times oh. that we've that we've done it, he's followed. We're not we're not keeping Vitor out of fighting from anywhere. You know, we had Vitor fight in Brazil because Vitor sells out in Brazil. You know, so if, it's if all a bunch a of conspiracy fucking crock of shit. Is what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all these. You know, whether it's reporters or fans or whatever that that want to go after Vitor. Vitor's on TRT. He's everybody knows it. He's you know, and uh, I dislike TRT. And we are testing guys that are on TRT to make sure they're within the limits and they're not cheating. So, but if you're not a fan of TRT, then you want these fighters to just stop fighting then, or, or you know, in a. Well, you heard my. Somebody posted that I said it to Vitor. I said it to everybody that's on TRT. Maybe if you have to take TRT, you're too old to be fighting still. That's what I said. And uh, I didn't say that to Vitor. I said it to everybody who's on TRT. Um, you know, what I don't like is guys using this TRT exemption as a loophole to get all jacked up during training and then come back to normal levels before the fight. That's what I don't like and that's what I don't want. And that's why I said we're going to start, we're going to start testing these guys. And that... At the same time, though, that would mean some of your bigger name properties would right. be retiring. So then, does that mean that you're gonna? You I know? get it. Trust me. Don't ever, don't ever let guys retiring. Don't ever make think that that's a reason to. Oh well, we'll let this guy do this, or we'll let this guy. There's rules. There's rules. And I heard all the knucklehead reporters who had something to say about the uh, the marijuana thing. Some of the dumbest shit, and I've heard some dumb shit from reporters. Some of the dumbest shit I've ever heard. There are fucking rules, whether it's TRT, you know, they can get an exemption, whether it's steroids, whether it's uh, uh, diuretics, whether it's uh, uh, pain pills. There's things that are banned substances. And whether you like it or not, marijuana is one of them. And somebody said, they took 90% of his purse. We didn't take fucking zero from his purse. We took 100% of the bonus that he wasn't eligible for. You guys realize that there's a player that plays for LSU football. This guy was supposed to be win the Heisman Trophy on the cover of Sports Illustrated. He's fucking done. And he dropped the like number 50 in the draft for marijuana. It's fucking illegal. You can't do it. It's a banned substance. Should it be? I necessarily don't think so. I don't think it's a performance. It doesn't give a shit what I, what I think. It doesn't matter. It's a banned substance. Every fighter knows that you, you go in and you use marijuana and you get caught, you're busted. Now, the commission's going to commit. They took that fight away from him. And he's going to get fined, right, by the commission. He wasn't eligible for that bonus. I know nobody likes Brian Carraway. Right? Brian Caraway, they don't like him. Who Brian Caraway? Brian Caraway followed the rules. He had a submission that night and he followed the rules. He absolutely 100% deserves that bonus. 100% deserves that bonus. What would it, what would it say if I gave that kid $130,000 for testing positive for marijuana and the guy who followed the rules doesn't get it? How does that make sense? So you reporters that had, and if you don't, if you want to speak up now, any of you that had something to say about it and want to debate this with me, I would fucking love to. We can tell. Yes, I would love to. <laughs> what are your thoughts on testosterone uh, therapy use exemption? It's all bullshit. It's illegal. You can't do it in football. You can't do it in basketball. You can't do it here. You can't do it there. And you can't do it with the athletic state commissions where you are involved in combat sports. It's illegal. The other thing is, if you show up to a title fight and you don't make weight, not only do you not get the fucking shot at the title, you don't get, you know, if you win, you still don't win the title. You're also not eligible for bonuses. Does anybody on earth not know this? No, everybody knows it. We didn't take any percentage of his purse. Not one dime. The commission will. I don't know how that's going to turn out. That's up to them. We took 100% of the bonus he wasn't eligible for and gave it to the guy who was eligible for it. Imagine what it would say if I gave that kid $130,000 for not following the rules. 
I know Mark Ratner's taking a stand with Nevada and said, you know, hey, I think you guys should consider. Yeah, and that's what we can do. Listen, yeah. you guys are being hard on guys with marijuana. There are some cases here, there, everywhere else. It's not legal. Would you do the flip with, with testosterone? How come, how come nobody's going crazy over this kid with the, uh, you know, th this kid was the number one guy in college football. This kid was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. He is done, gone, kicked out for marijuana. Probably because it's such a culture, you know, the NFL is used to it, it's as sad as it is. Which kind of leads me to the next question is... Well, there's, there's definitely a culture everywhere right now. I would have to say, and this is just my opinion from where I grew up, more people are smoking weed now than ever in the history of, I can remember, Absolutely. you know? Um, I, I don't think it's necessarily a cultural thing. I think I, I think it would blow your mind if you knew half, half of you people probably smoke weed. I know he does. Uh, <laughs> you know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Never have. Don't test the germs. You could have a much easier time. <laughs> but seriously, I, I, I uh, you know, it's a rule. It's well, a I say, would you ever take the same test with testosterone since you admit you're not a fan of it? Would you guys ever go to Nevada and say, hey, can we get rid of these TVs, man? We're not, this is not a good thing for the sport. Sure, I'm sure I could stroll right in there and, and, and have maybe, a Maybe a representative of yours. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, Lorenzo would probably be better at that one. But Would, would you ever consider that? Because we did. We did do it. You don't th I mean, I've said it publicly, too. I'm saying it publicly. Ratner has said it publicly. You know, I mean, we, we speak for the company as a whole. You know, it's not like, uh, you know, so what, what are you going to do? Are they looking into it? I have no idea. Ask, you guys, when we get done, call Keith Kaiser and ask him what he's doing. I mean, I don't know. Keith and I don't talk about these things. And, you know, I, I, I give my opinions. You know, we go through the proper channels. Mark Ratner handles all that stuff. Well, the most respected commissioner ever. Everybody focuses on the athletes instead of the commissions, where the, the athletes are just following the rules that are in place for them. That's it. You know? You know, Guys, you if you don't follow the rules, bad shit happens. I think the point of this is the, the rules aren't always fair. I mean, the, Nothing's fair. Life isn't fair. Smoke a bunch of weed at fucking work. See what happens to you. No matter where you work. I don't care where you work. All right? Unless you work in a place that's selling weed, <laughs> you're going to get in big fucking trouble for smoking it. Throughout the history of our sport, though, we've suffered setbacks. We Where's Chia Pata today? Where is he? Right there at fucking work. And where, you show up and you're fucking stoned out of your mind. I'm sorry, guys. I was smoking weed. How's that going to play out? Not good, brother. No matter where you were. For the record, I've never smoked with you. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, Brian Caraway. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm serious. Speaking of the whole Brian Caraway thing and breaking the rules, Nate's tweet got him in a lot of trouble. Is it a zero tolerance policy in terms of the tweet words and the words you can't say and whether or not he, the Listen, spirit of the word was this or that? I am fed up with the bullshit. And one thing that I have noticed is money makes people fucking react real quick you know sorry's great i love a sorry here and there All, sorry's are always good you know but it's easy to say sorry but when you gotta start forking out some cash you start remembering a lot more you know and, and just so you know too i saw a lot of things online and things being said about when i use that word do you think that i didn't pay in a million different ways for saying that word the difference is, I'm actually really sorry for saying it, okay? I am not a homophobe whatsoever, okay? I, I, you know, we were just driving here. Just right now, when me and Elliot were driving here, there was a sticker on the back of this lady's car, and it said, who are you to tell me who I can love? And I say that all the time, like, who the government to tell people, that, you know, that, that, that this guy doesn't love this guy, this girl doesn't, right? When I said it, I have, I have people that work for us that are gay. I have friends that are gay. You know, it, it is a word that bothers them, and it's a word that shouldn't be said. I had the same argument that Nate had, and I don't disagree with that argument in that I grew up in the 80s, okay? I grew up in the 80s. That was a word you used. If you go back and you watch uh, 16 Candles, that word is in 16 Candles, you know? Molly Ringwald says it to... Uh, to uh, Anthony Ray. Michael Hall. Oh, no. You know? Yeah. And, Ted. huh? Farmer Ted. That's his character. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then I was watching another 80s movie the other day where, like, these little kids are saying it. And it's just, that's the way it was. Well, it's not that way anymore. It, it's an offensive word that, that they don't like, you know? And, and people want to call it, oh, we're bowing down to uh, 
political correctness or we're doing this and that. No, we're not. We're being civil human beings. Being. There's a group of people that doesn't like that word. Okay, then don't say it. You know, it's an offensive word. It, even if though you're not directing it towards, because neither was I in my rant or whatever you want to call it. I wasn't directing it toward gay people. But it was a word that bothers gay people, you know? Well, and the thing is, it goes around. I mean, Sergio Garcia just, you know, said he was going to serve Tiger Woods some fried chicken. So he would say some stupid stuff. Fun time. Right. It's things, you know, it's going to happen. It's going to continue to happen every day. But let me tell you what, when you, when you get fined, you know, Matt Mitrione, like, dude. Are you serious? This is what it's going to cost. What's going to cost you? But I always got the feeling you like Nate. Though. Huh? I always got the feeling you like Nate. Diaz. I like Nate Diaz very much. I like Matt Mitrione. Yeah. You know, the people that I don't like, I make it very clear who I don't like. You know, I like both those guys. I like Nate very much. You know, um, but Nate, Nate messed up. Overall, in terms of satisfaction with the new code of conduct, is it still a work in progress or you feel like you've got it where you want it? I, I think this whole business and this whole sport is always a work in progress, but yeah, I'm, I, I like the direction we're going in now. Are managers being talked to at all? Because it seems like in some instances they're making things maybe worse instead of better. Yeah. To answer that question perfectly for you, managers are scared shitless of their clients. You understand what I'm saying? No manager wants to come out and go, he was stupid to say that. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're one phone call away from not working for that guy anymore. So take what managers say. Managers don't matter. How's that? I mean, let me put that one out there. I don't give a shit what they have to say or what they think or whatever. They're puppets. Coming from Dana, the Yeah, exactly. In, in this, I was a puppet too. In this most recent case with Nate, you, you guys disclosed the length of his penalty and the money involved. In Mitchell's case, you didn't. Going forward, is that going to be standard now, disclosing? Say that again? In Going forward now, is it going to be the case where you disclose the penalty like you did with Nate? Um, in I, I don't case, think we did. Did. Yeah, you did. I think Nate did. No, you did. We did? Yeah. I don't know. It was on, it was on, it was on UFC.com. Sure. So you will? Yeah, forward? I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Dana, MMA in New York. Hi. Hi, how are you? <laughs> there's the uh, smear campaign that was going on, and now there's a website that the UFC has put out. What can you tell us about that website and oh, yeah. its efforts? So, yeah, so, so now we put out a website, and we'll give, give you weekly updates on the culinary union, what they're doing, how bad they suck, and uh, things like that. And, uh, yeah, it's just, you know what, we, 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 we put up with their shit for a long time, and now, you know, we're going to give it back to them. Have you heard about the uh, sex scandal going on with Sheldon Silver and the possibility that some New Yorkers are calling for his re resignation? I did not. Yeah, there's actually $103,000 that he spent to cover up another oh, assemblyman's indiscretions. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds like a good guy to work for. <laughs> Do you think if he did step down that maybe it would help pave the way to get the if bill passed through? If he step down, it'll, it'll be in tomorrow. Yeah. What's the, what's the quick conduct would have stopped would have, they, now the guys have these rules in front of them and what not like, and then you got two guys going on each other and you think the policy will just go prevent this yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely a good thing. I like the direction we're going in. And like I said, you know, everybody was all pissed off after the Mitrion thing. And I said, believe me, it's going to get worse before it gets better. So uh, when, when, when you start getting fined and it costs you money, you stop and think before you do stuff. And uh, maybe it hasn't become public, but if you behind the scenes have other people and other fighters been No. Everyone has been public. Yeah, I don't. I don't hide too much. Are you surprised that Nate hasn't come out and apologized? You know what? I, the one thing that I don't ever do. This is the thing that I, I don't like. I, I, you're never going to hear that I went and said you better apologize. You don't tell grown men to apologize. You're either sorry for doing it, or you're not. That's why this new policy is. I don't give a shit if you're sorry or not. You're getting fined. Maybe it'll make you a little, a little more sorry for saying it, or a little smarter not to say it next time. Um, 
but you can't tell. I, I, that's the one of the things that I just don't believe in. Like a guy coming out and saying, I'm sorry for saying, but he's not sorry. He's, he's doing it because the company made him do it. People who are really sorry and want to say they're sorry, okay. You know? But I'm not, I'm not going to tell grown men to apologize if they're really not sorry. It's just, it's not, what's the point? To, to, to just, uh, it's not real. If it's not sincere, then I won't do it. Anderson Silva has a big fight coming up, obviously, against Chris Weidman. Has there been some movement on him signing a longer contract, another contract with you? Silva? Yeah. It's been done. Yeah, okay. It's done. So it's 10 fights? 10 fight deal. How many of those do you expect you'll actually get? I don't know. Um, you know, I don't know. Who knows? You know, how, how long was I, uh, you know... That other guy that used to be here that was old that used to fight, I used to say he was going to be done. You know, who knows? What's the science behind signing a, a deal that length? Is it just to ensure that, you know, you get him until he retires? Or, or what's the thought behind signing I, for 10 fights? I didn't do it. We, we wanted to sign him to, to, to a six or eight fight deal. He said, let's do it. He said, let's do a 10 fight deal. Did he explain why? He's Anderson Silva. Yeah. <laughs> He's the black Dana White. Yeah, that's right. He's the black Dana White. He wants to be here longer. I don't know. You know, you know, we we, we have that crazy relationship with Anderson. You know. But he's uh, he's a fun guy, and he wants to be here. Dan, Why would he not want to be here? Sure. He's doing okay. There's been a lot of talk about USC contracts in the past couple of weeks. Obviously, mm -hmm. John Cholish was very outspoken before he retired. There was a John. police report article, I believe, or an John Cholish, I know. I've seen all the stuff that's going on with him. What's scary is this guy wasn't good enough to fight in the UFC. I'm wondering if he's good enough to be on Wall Street. I mean, this guy has to be the biggest moron I've ever seen in my life. He's talking about taxes. Yes, Wall Street guy, you have to pay taxes. So do I. When we go down to Brazil and do a fight, I pay taxes in Brazil too. And Sweden and all these other countries and states pay taxes in every state that we go to. You know what I mean? And uh, so what happens is when you're down in Brazil, there was a letter that was sent out that he put out today that said, uh, you know, it's obviously pretty tough to cash a check down in Brazil. The money will be wired into your account. And, uh, you know, he put that up. He doesn't understand that. And he doesn't understand that he has to pay taxes. And you work on Wall Street, you know, it's just. I guess he was questioning, like, what lower level people make. The fact that, you know, they, they he signed they, a fucking contract. He signed a contract. He got the same opportunity that George St. Pierre, Anderson Silva, uh, Johnny Bones Jones, Cain Velasquez, and the list goes on and on. The unfortunate part of this business is some of you are good enough to be here and some of you are not. That's life. That's life, Cholish. Unfortunately, that is life, my friend. You weren't good enough to be here. Hopefully, you're good enough to stick around on Wall Street. Because if you don't know what fucking taxes are, I got a funny feeling you're not. There was an article on Bleacher Report that kind of went through the USC contract as well. They had somebody, a late We've done this thing. First of all, Lorenzo's gone. Lorenzo did an hour and a half interview with ESPN about fighter pay. I mean, the fighter pay thing, we went through the thing, uh, you know, the other day with fighter pay. Fighter pay has been beat over the head to death. You know what I mean? If you don't like what you're getting paid here, if you don't want to be here, don't fucking sign a contract with us. And I can tell you this, John Cholish was paid discretionary bonuses even when he lost. You know? What do you want me to do? Guy is delusional, not too fucking bright, and uh, what do you want me to say to that? I mean, I don't, even, I don't even know how to answer that question other than the guy lost, he's not good enough to be here, and he's apparently not too bright. What did you make of the rumors of uh, the incident between Brian Caraway and Cat Singano? There was an alleged rumor that uh, Caraway elbowed Cat. What went through your head when you heard that? Actually, I talked to Cat about it. Yeah, she said what happened was that she was sitting down at medicals. Somebody walked by and something hit her in the back of the head. She turned around, looked, and it was Brian Caraway. And, you know, she said, I was sitting there. I don't know if he bumped into me or if he, you know, was on purpose or it wasn't on purpose. She said other people said other people said they saw it and he did do it on purpose, but those people wouldn't say it to the media. You know, this is the fight business, you know, and you get some people in here that are not very nice sometimes, you know, and you get people that, you know, what do you want me to do? You want me to go grab Brian Caraway and say, did you elbow Kat Zagano in the head? You know, I mean, I don't, I don't even know what to say about it. These kind of things happen. I mean, she should have turned around and said, hey, she just fucking elbow me in the head. You know what I mean? Or her camp should have said, you know what? I, you know, and then something would have happened and whatever would have happened, happened. But I, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to do about that. 
Maybe you could add lie detector tests to the drug test. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Can we use it on you and uh, matchups and stuff mm -hmm. like that? <laughs> yeah. Next time Speak we bring up random. Yeah. Spe <laughs> speaking of matchups, uh, the Boston show is starting to come together. Yep. We've got uh, Alistair Overeem and Travis Brown. What else are we going to be seeing that night? Well, I'm waiting for this Saturday night. And uh, I will announce the main event next week. Because I know, you know, Chael, I talked to him about fighting Vanderlei, and that, you know, that's an exciting fight. We know Boston, there's a ton of Brazilians there. That would be True. a really exciting fight. Yeah. But what happened with that? I agree. Um, nothing. Yeah. Nothing happened with it. But we, that was never, we never said this is going to be the fight. That was an internet rumor. Uh -huh. um, you know, I probably have four options right now. Four options right now. I want to see what happens on Saturday and give me a couple more options. I like options, so I want, I want to wait a couple days. I wanted to get it done this week, but it just, I couldn't get it done this week. And will we have some involvement? I know there's a there's a Patriots preseason game that, that day or something. Like what? You it's going to be insane. <laughs> so we got the Patriots game on Friday, which is on Fox. And then the day of the fight are the Red Sox and the Yankees. Um, and, yeah, we're doing some cool stuff for that yeah. fight. It's going to be awesome, man. I'm so pumped for that launch of that network. It's going to be fun. Dana, what are you doing with Gilbert Melendez? And have you spoke to him recently? I haven't talked to him since the fight. No. Usually when guys, after they fight, and especially a fight like that, you know, you give them some time to go home, relax, and unless the guy starts blowing you up and says, get me back in there quick. Are you surprised that he didn't say get me back in there and want a rematch immediately, given how close the fight was? I don't know. I mean, but that's... That, 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 that's Ben Henderson, though. I mean, that, those are his fights. I mean, if that, that's every one of Ben Henderson's fights. No, no Ben Henderson fight ends and you're like, holy shit, Ben Henderson won that one. You know what I mean? You're like, this is going to be another fucking scary one. Because you announced the, the number one contender match after the fight. Uh, and after the press conference had ended, but when you were asked during the press conference, you didn't give an answer. I'm wondering, had Gilbert said, you know, I want this rematch right away, would you have been incl inclined to give him it right away as opposed to no. waiting for this one? Probably not, no. The Phantom Mike. This question is about Nick Diaz and if he's going <laughs> to fight Carlos Condit, right, lady? <laughs> I don't know. I, there's been some rumors about it. What do you think about that one, <laughs> Uh, Dana, what's the bantam weight picture looking like now with Hanem Barrao injured and Dominic obviously not on the way back? The interim to the interim. Right, that's what I was wondering, in yeah. fact. I'm kidding. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Is there any kind of... Well, the thing is, with ligament damage, it's almost worse than a break. Ligaments take a long time to heal, and, you know, we'll see what happens. Is there any timetable for his return that's set? And did you have him look at uh, UFC doctors at all, or...? No. <laughs> yes, I was there. Can you tell it is true. It happened. Frank Drake was talking to me. Bruce Buffer came over and leaned in to say something or whatever. He look at my watch, he said, or whatever. And, uh, and, and, and he chopped him in the neck. I like karate chopped him in the neck and hard, not like... You know. Frank Trigg chopped Bruce Buffer in the throat. And, uh, and then it was literally... It happened so fast. It was just like... He chopped him in the neck, and then boom, they just started punching. Frank and I was said, like, Frank I said. was like, holy shit. I literally went like this. Whoop, I stepped back up against the wall and just so 10 Frank floors just watching these two punch <laughs> the shit out of each other. So he said that you and, and Lorenzo were standing and enjoying the fight? I don't know if Lorenzo was there. I was there with somebody. Tom, oh, it was Tom Page, yeah, my, my old security guy. You said you were having fun, like, watching them fight. Yeah, I stepped back and said, holy shit, these two are blasting the shit out of each other. And then when we got to the bottom floor and the doors opened, they, like, stopped, and, 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 you know, they're both kind of pissed. And then they started laughing, and Buffer, I believe Buffer had yeah. been cut by the watch and had to go get stitches yeah, that's what from being cut by Trigg's he watch. He was holding a friend in a, in a choke when... Uh, I mean, the thing almost ended, and then the doors were open. I don't remember chokes, man. All I remember is those two were blasting the living shit out of each other. I mean, they, it's not like they were just, like, goofing around punching. They were punching each other. And I was just like, holy shit, this is happening right now. Frank said uh, you, you and him were talking about money. And he said, don't come and interrupt me when I'm talking about money. Like, <laughs> Dude, I, seriously, I don't remember anything except those two just punching the shit out of each other for the whole elevator ride. Like, hey, they're grown men. <laughs> and you don't chop a guy in the fucking throat, man. And good <laughs> you, 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 props for Buffer. Sad. You know, most guys would have said, hey, what are you doing, Frank? That was mean. You know, <laughs> Buffer started blasting with him. So you don't care that employees are fighting each other? No, I, I mean, of course I do. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, it happened, man. It was in the moment it happened. And, and you know, it was true. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was rigged. Speaking yeah. of employees fighting each other, a good fight for Jacare last weekend. People are uh, the idea of Jacare versus Okami is kind of appealing. This is somebody who you know got introduced to the UFC the other night, had a great win. He's been fighting for strikers for a long time. Where do you see somebody like him? Because certainly the middleweight picture right now, depending on what happens with Anderson and Chris, but the middleweight picture is we got some new new blood in there. It's a very good blood. That fight will happen. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah, which way? You nailed that one. Okami and Okami Jacare. And Jacare. Is, that, is that signed or are you still working on that? I'm sure we're still working on it. I probably just fucked it up and blew it up. <laughs> yeah, that's the fight we're going to make. Any targeting date or event for that? Um, yeah, but I don't remember. Wow. <laughs> wow. Is that for in shop? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How surprising is this run by Mark Hunt fan for you guys? How's the what? How surprising is Mark Hunt's run? Incredible, man. You. you know what's funny? I, uh, last night, I, I am sure this happens to you guys too. Last night I'm at home and it's like 10.30 and I go, oh, I gotta jump on the internet and check something out on YouTube. It's like 10.30, I get on YouTube and I watch this thing and I go, oh, what the fuck is that? I click, 2.30 I get off the computer, you know? I was on there from 10.30 to 2.30 and I must have watched seven or eight Mark Hunt fights last night <laughs> from K1 and, and, and Pride and uh, it's, it's, it's amazing, at his age, and, and what he's been able to accomplish, especially the story that goes behind it that we didn't want him. You know, and we said, here, we'll just buy your pride contract out and pay you not to fight. And he's like, I, I want to fight and I want to earn it. And I want to, you know, and he comes in and does what he did. What it's amazing. Behind behind wanting him. to pay him off and not he, wanting him as a fighter. He had more uh, losses than wins and it was on a horrible streak. You know, it was like, yeah, okay, we, we bought the company and Pride did fights like that, you know what I mean? It, That's what it, I was going to say. Did you kind of view him as, I, it's, it's kind of not fair, but as a freak show fighter? I wouldn't say as a freak show, right? but Pride yeah. didn't look at things the way that we do. And uh, we just felt that it didn't fit. And what guy would say no to just getting paid and not fighting, you know? He would have been paid and free and clear to do whatever he wanted to do. Uh, and he said no. You had to admire that. I, I, I don't admire it. I absolutely, positively respect it. And what he's been able to accomplish, I think it's one of the greatest stories in sports right now. You know? I really do. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, is there any updates on the gloves? Yeah. It's funny you asked me that. Because I was actually, before I came here, I had like six pairs of gloves on before I, before I left. Um, first and foremost, guys need to close their hands. Okay, 13 years we've had the same clubs, you know? Close your friggin' hands and stop poking people in the eyes, number one. Number two, we're looking at the gloves that make your hands go like this, you know? Curve them where it'd be really hard to extend your fingers and poke somebody in the eye. So they would still be open but fingered, you could, but naturally curved. Yeah, you gotta have open fingered gloves. Yeah, I mean, right, for sure. I mean, there's still gonna be situations where guys will have their hands like this and they reach out and you can still come down a guy's eye. It's just. Close your hands. You don't have to have your hands wide open to block punches. Could this be kind of like the pride gloves? More like the shooto gloves. Okay. Yep. And, and uh, how long would it take for that to be? Uh, We're working on it. I mean, you got to, you, you have to come up with the design that you like. You got, you got creating new gloves is a huge process. I mean, when we did the gloves in the beginning, they came in and they had material that was sewn here and it was kind of sharp on the corner and that could stick in your eye. How do we get that out of here but still keep the, you know, the integrity of the glove? Because the last thing you want to in a fight is a glove busting open. So there's just so many different things that you have to do to, to get a new glove. Original, but we're on it. The original shoot glove that's round? Don't make the hang one out, but you still have the fingers? No, no, you're talking about old school, like Bruce Lee. No, 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 no. the old, the original shooter glove was the Yeah, that, that's Covered. what, so winning actually makes a shooter glove. Yeah. You know, winning, they're like the best boxing gloves you can get. They're like the, the friggin' Mercedes of boxing gloves. So, um, you know, we got some of those today and we were looking at those too. But even when, when you look at the, like the shoot, the traditional shooter gloves, when you close, they have this thing that covers the thumb. But this thumb still pops out right here. But if you lay it down in here, there's a piece that comes out. And it's literally square. That was designed to protect the thumb. Not good. I mean, there's just so many. It's, it, it's, it's tough to design a glove that we're working on. Do you have any update on GSP Hendricks? GSP Hendricks, yes. Um, George St. Pierre and I talked. Remember I kept telling you guys like at the last 30 press conferences I was going to talk to George St. Pierre? I talked to him like two days ago. And uh, 
he's going to call me back. <laughs> uh, he's going to call me back, I think today, he said. Today or tomorrow, he and I will talk. No, we haven't, you know, probably in the fall. Yeah, you look, the Hendrix fight, obviously, is the one that you're looking to book with him. Hendrix what? Hendrix and GSP. Yep. That's what they just asked me. Oh, I couldn't hear them. Oh, yeah, Sorry. yeah. Okay. No. So you've been okay. traveling, you've been to Ireland, Germany lately. Are you looking to do some fights there? I know you've been to, uh, been there before, but not for a while. So are yeah. you looking to open up more European spots Yeah, we're going to well? do a fight in Ireland uh, coming up soon here within the next year. And uh, I was in Germany for the year stuff. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, Gary Cook has a lot of good stuff going on over there. Are you do, you, do you pay attention to other worldwide organizations? I know there's EFC in Africa. Um, I actually know who on Potts, Ron Potts, who was the heavyweight champion. And I, I'm wondering how much do you go and, you know, fish around through other organizations around the world to try to bring some of these guys in to grow the sport, you know, with names, local names? Joe, Joe and Sean do. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't. I used to do that back in the day. I don't do that anymore. Time. Nope. Nope. Conor McGregor, what's next for him? He's fighting, he's fighting in Boston. Nice. Got an opponent? Yeah, have you named an opponent? Yep. I can't tell you guys before I tell Fox. I gotta tell Fox first. So I, I, I uh... Step up in competition though, presumably a bigger name. Yeah, I mean, n not like, uh, nothing crazy. I mean, we're not going to throw the kitchen sink at this kid <laughs> yet. He won one fight, you know. Let's let's give the kid a, a shot here. Um, well, he's already calling for he wants both titles at 45 and 55, so. I love this kid. I love this kid. Yeah, I love him. I love his attitude. I love his fighting style. He's, he's great, man. So. Yeah. We can wait a minute to make a call. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, to, to who, Fox? Oh, yeah. 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 We'll just get the call. Yeah. Yeah. In all seriousness, Karen did bring up uh, in Nick and Carlos Condit. Carlos was vocal about saying that he was interested in the rematch. Is that a fight that you'd love to put together? Nick's, Carl, so Carlos call, called out Nick, and Nick said he wants to fight Carlos, too. We haven't heard from Nick yet, but I mean, we. We text him. Uh, if he were to say he'd, he would be interested in the rematch. He's a retired promoter now. Is that not the case? <laughs> yep. What's your thoughts on that? Good friend. Yeah. Welcome to the losing money business. <laughs> Just make sure to pay your taxes. Yeah. Yeah. But would you be open to the rematch if Nick was on board? Cool. What's that? He just popped into the office. Popped into the office. He, there's some guy in town that he does business with, and he'd never seen the UFC offices before, so he came in and I'm not going to tell Dan Sever no. So I gave him the tour, hung out with him. He's a good guy, and... Uh, that's it. That's it. Dana, if Nick did come out of retirement, would you have to talk to him about his promotion? I mean, that kind of a conflict of interest to be a fighter and a promoter at the same I mean, obviously, it's not direct competition, I mean, but... No, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there's been guys who have promoted shows before that fight for us, you know? Josh Schumann. Yeah. Josh Schumann. Yeah. And uh, Tito was doing it for a while. And, you know, like I said, you want to lose money? Come on. Come on in the business. It's fun. <laughs> Looks fun from the outside. You know? What are your uh, thoughts on the addition of Josh Barnett? And what do you do you have any ideas of what will be next for him and when? Well, I think, you know, I think Josh Barnett is a good example of what we were talking about earlier with contracts and stuff. Josh Barnett, we, we tried to come to a deal with him, and we couldn't come to a deal with him. You know? And uh, he went out. He shopped around. And we ended up making a deal. Um, it's just like Rampage. Uh, Check Congo. You know, Rampage want to leave. Okay. I mean, uh, this business is hard enough without being in business with guys you don't want that don't want to work with you, or you don't want to work with them, or whatever the deal is. You can mutually agree to go your own way, and you know, no harm done, no hurt feelings, and. Uh, you know, we couldn't come to a deal with Chet Congo before his last fight. He lost his last fight, so he moved on. And uh, it's the business, man. It's the, it's the way things go. But Josh had the opportunity to shop around, talk to other people, you know. And, and, and oh, another thing. So, Folkman, talking about how bad our insurance sucks, right? Fucking interesting. Uh, is it better than fucking Bellator's? Is it better than World Series of Fighting? Is it better than Top Ranks? No promoter in the history of the world. $1,500 deductible? Blow your fucking knee out. You'll be fucking pumped to pay a $1,500 deductible. You moron. You know? 
Uh, yeah, I just want to throw that one. In. <laughs> How quickly could we see Drives Josh in action? Huh? How quickly could we see Josh in action? Well, he wants a full camp. Uh, you know, he hasn't fought in a while. You know, and his hand was hurt from the from the Cormier fight. So, you know, whenever we can set up a fight for him, in time for him to have a full camp. You know, can you explain the Roy Nelson situation? Uh, why he's fighting so quickly against Miocic? He's on the last fight of his deal. Right. And uh, we owe him a fight before his deal is up. We had to get him on that card or by a certain amount of time or else. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, he's, not, he's not giving us any extensions. <laughs> right. But are you interested in still signing him afterwards? Yeah. We, 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 we have an offer out to uh, Deloitte. Is he giving you trouble? Come on. Roy, would he give us trouble? But that's not the fight you wanted for him, right? Um, no. Right. Yeah, he was going to go in a different direction. But he's so fucking smart, he's smarter than everybody else. So <laughs> let him figure it out. Who? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Listen, and if we end up that we can't do business together, then Roy can go do business anywhere else. Yeah, you want to. Yeah, we, we made an offer to him. Yeah, listen, Roy's the smartest guy on earth. He's a fucking genius, this guy. So he'll figure out whatever his best path is, and he'll it'll be good, I'm sure. Any uh, comments on Matt Sarah retiring? Yeah, I, you know, when he did it, I called him up after. And, uh, I said, why wouldn't you tell me you were retiring? And I would have brought you out to Vegas, and we could have, you know, da-da-da. He said, you know what? I was talking to my buddy from Newsday, and we were talking about fighting. It's just sort of evolved into my retirement, you know? And he says, I'm cool with this. I'm happy. And you, just, you couldn't meet a fucking better guy than Matt Serra. You couldn't meet a more stand-up, loyal guy than Matt Serra. He's just, he's, just, he's awesome, man. And, and the crazy thing about, like, a Matt Serra, he's been with us since UFC 30, you know? And uh, he's had some good times, some bad times. One of the biggest upsets ever in UFC history. He's had a great career, you know? So... I mean, I don't know what else to say other than I, I love the guy and, you know, I'm happy for him. Any update on Dan Hardy? Yeah, Dan Hardy uh, is taking that second opinion, so, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I want to jump back to Barnett really quick. You talked about Sarah being a tenured fighter. Barnett's one of the originals. Mm -hmm. You guys said you're up and downs, but now that he's signed, he now, that he's, now that he's on the UFC board. UFC 31, I think. Yeah, now that he's on the board, how good does it feel, especially with kind of the heavyweight division being wide open to have a guy like Barnett? Yeah. I mean, Barnett's been one of the best in the world for 13 years. I mean, longer maybe. I don't know. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said about him last time, he's, he's one of these guys who's always been, you know, marches to the beat of his own drum and, and does what he wants to do. Uh, and it's worked for him. I mean, he seems happy. He doesn't seem, you know, like he feels like he made any wrong decisions. And even when we're, you know, negotiating a new contract he's like yeah I'll go look around for a while and I'll come back and, and he did and it seems like one of those things you kind of respect that though you, it seems with you and I don't, I don't want to speak out of turn or anything but you kind of respect the hard headed people a little bit more no that's not true no. We're, we're, we're all men and women we're all men and women here the honesty? we all have to choose our own path in life if a guy tells me and, and we all pick teams I mean really when it comes down to it we all end up picking teams and we choose the paths that we walk down, right? And there's been guys in the past that said, you know, that I've called out to and I've said, hey, listen, I'd love to have you in the UFC. We, you know, th this is what we're doing, big things over here, da, 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 you know, the whole fucking, you know, and uh, guys are like, dude, no fucking way, man. I'm getting paid cash in, in, in Japan. I don't have to pay taxes. I got a good gig going on over here. Good luck to you. Do you think? And these are the same guys that are coming back to me now going, dude, what's up? Why can't I? You chose your path. You picked a team. You chose your path. You chose the direction that you wanted to go in in your career and in your life. If shit didn't work out, that's not my fault. You know? I'm definitely that guy. You know what I mean? I'm that guy. And there's guys that are like that. And you see how the guys that were with me, that were with me, with me, in the dark days when we didn't know what was going to happen. He was Tito Joe they're doing very well you know those guys are doing very well how excited are you for the beginning of tough 18 of filming 
starting pretty soon. Are, are you nervous at all? <laughs> no. I'm always excited when we, when we start tough. And, uh, I, you know, I love it. It's fun. It, it's uh, This year is going to be interesting, obviously, because the women, first time we've ever done the women. But um, <laughs> men and women living in the house together. We'll see how it goes, but well, I'm excited. Well, plus when people saw Kat Zingano's fight, I think a lot of pro- people probably went, damn. When people what? Saw Kat Zingano fight. Yeah. I mean, and so now, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, Ronda, right. you know, now you... Now Undefeated. You, exactly. And, and and nothing against Liz Carmouche, but a lot of people are saying Kat is the one who could we'll her. take her down. Yeah. yeah. How do they get along? Do you know? You know, I, I think it's one of those things where, you know, they're obviously competitors, mm-hmm. but they respect each other. Um, they don't. It's not like Misha and Ronda. I mean, that's about as bad of a relationship as you could get. Um, so, yeah. I think they respect each other. But I think it's going to be a lot like Sonnen and uh, and, uh, and and Jones. Yeah, I think it'll be like that. Competitive, some digs here and there, but you know, no crazy shit. Yep. Earlier, you talked about Melbourne uh, turning to tender status. No, you know, there, there's no plans right now with Vitor. He just fought, so you know, we'll see what happens. Again, we got another fight this weekend. We'll see what happens. Um, but I, I mean, yeah, I, actually, now that it, it, it really, really sinks in what you just said, you know, it, it would make sense for those two to fight, and that's that's not far away. Those two fight, and we see what happens. Or Vitor could fight again. I don't know. But he could fight either one of those guys. Do you have, so you don't have anybody else in mind for Vitor at this time, period of time? Dana, uh, look into uh, uh, the fight card Saturday night. Obviously, heavyweight title on the line right underneath that heavyweight contenders match. After all these years of, of promoting fights, do you find it's helping you now when you have these fight cards where uh, multiple questions can be answered within the same weight division on one night in terms of where you're going past Saturday? Like tournament style? Well, that, that there's going to be a heavyweight title on the line, but also we may determine the number one contenders yeah, match. Just no, whenever yeah. possible, is it helpful that that works out? Well, even way? if that didn't happen, I mean, we probably would have had a fight before this that would have determined who was going to be next to fight him anyway. But, yeah, it's it's always pretty cool when, when two guys, uh, you know, I'm not saying this is what we're doing, but I'm just throwing this out there. Like, I'm talking about Fox Sports 1. Whichever heavyweight wins each fight, maybe you could do that on Fox. You know, there's things like that could happen if they fight the same night, depending on injuries and all the other. I mean, look at John Jones. I could have turned John Jones around real quick after his last fight. He friggin' pops his toe. I mean, you just never know what's going to happen. Well, and it seems like it also, as, as much as you can have an insurance policy against injuries, that it helps with that, too. If somebody drops out, you've got a contender's match and a co-main right below it and maybe promote somebody up. Is that just something you kind of keep in the back, maybe something you've learned, you know, uh, putting matches together and cards together after all this time? To be honest with you, we really don't think about stuff like that. I mean, especially after last year, the shit we went through last year, what we focus on is building the best card we can possibly build, you know? And you're never going to... Our style of matchmaking is maybe everybody doesn't like Cain Velasquez versus, you know, Bigfoot Silva. Well, maybe you like Mark Hunt and Junior Dos Santos. And if you don't like that, maybe you like the TJ Grant Gray Maynard fight. If you don't like that, maybe you love Glover Teixeira and, and Tahuna. And if you don't like that, how the hell could you not like KJ Noons and Donald Cerrone? You know what I mean? So that's really the way that we build cards. We build cards so that we want every fight to matter. And there's a little something for everybody. Since you went to John Jones, did he tell you when he'll be ready to fight you? Yeah, so we talked yesterday too. And, uh, you know, his thing is he says he feels great, toes healing good, but the problem was that ligament. You know, that ligament popped. And, and just anywhere you tear ligaments, just blood flow helps the thing repair itself and then heal. Six weeks, it could be six months. And yeah, it's bad. Always some little crazy thing, you know? Why would he have a better idea? He's, he, he had to go to Russia. He's in Russia right now. He just tweeted a picture of him. Did he really? Yeah, so he's in Russia, and then when he gets back, he is uh, getting an MRI done on his toe again. Which I think is Monday. 
Right. You done with me? Yeah. Sorry. What do you got, bro? Uh, you, yeah. <laughs> Xbox One uh, was just revealed earlier this week, and the first oh, of the UFC video game EA Sports came out. You got to get kind of your your take on the game. If uh, you're excited about it, you like it. Yeah. Um, EA Sports is pumped about this title. They put this title up there with FIFA, you know, because it's a global, it's a global brand. As big as Madden is, as big as that game is, as awesome as that game is, I love that game. Uh, I play that game with my kids all the time. This is a game that actually reaches a lot of So we're one of the big, 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 big titles. The, the, you know, um, the Microsoft is treating us great. Xbox, EA, it's going to be good stuff. Man. I mean, I, I, you know, I, a lot of our fans are hardcore gamers. They don't get pumped when they see this game. The stuff that these guys are working on, the stuff that they've shown us already, it's not even anywhere near being done. The stuff that they've shown us already is pretty cool. I don't know who's going to be able to come. You know, and a lot of the times what we do is we, you know, if you're in England, maybe Bisbee's on the cover. If you're in Brazil, Anderson Silva's on the cover. If you're in the United States, somebody's on the cover. If you're, in, you know, over here, over there, who knows? I mean, we'll see how that, how that all plays out. But one thing that I hope I'm not blowing anything here, which I normally do, um, there's going to be a fan vote on, on who gets the cover in the United States. I mean, I have a new record, a um, new TV deal for um, for Mexico and Latin America. Are you happy with that? Yeah, you know we got it, right? Yeah. We're on Televisa this weekend? Yeah. Um, Are you happy with that? I'm super happy. How many more uh, eyeballs does that mean? Good question. I don't know the answer to that question. I'll find out for that. I'll get it. Is it a long term deal or just for this, just for this fight? It's a good question, too. Don't know the answer to that one either. What, what are the, the odds for Game uh, Velasquez to defend finally in Mexico? What, what, what are the odds for what? For Game Velasquez to finally defend in Mexico if he wins? Yeah, I would, I, would, uh, I would love that. We want that. I have a feeling we'll be in Houston, Texas with him if he defends before we're in uh, Mexico. What's been the Tough place to navigate. Yeah, man. It's not an easy place to get in and do business. American company, yeah. Yep, it's a tough place to navigate. Tougher than I thought it was going to be. Probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, going to Houston, I'm not, I, it's not like I got some big you know, plans. If we go to Houston, he would like Houston. Did you have any as far as what? Well, the people are bitching, saying they're yes. not going to be able to get that. Yes. I know. Some guy tweeted me a thing the other day. He's like, here's the pamphlet. It's all soccer. They don't say anything about the UFC and all this stuff. And, uh, yeah, Gary Cook. It's a favorite. People are they're worried. That it's a better deal than we have last time. You know, it's, it's, we got a deal. We're on TV in the UK. The, the people in the UK are going crazy saying, you guys are fucking... Are you serious? Do you think that we don't want the best television deal we can get in the UK? They've got a monopoly on it. A monopoly on it. Just don't just, you know, it's not like you got, in the United States, a thousand channels that you can go to and, you know, you can, you can do a deal with. There's one big dog over there. Mm -hmm. We had a guy, yeah, we had a deal with them right when we ran the ran stuff on TV, it rated to the roof. The guy who is the, the guy who runs the whole show. The new guy? No, it's the guy that's been there since then. Yeah, he doesn't like the sport. Do you want to create a website for him? <laughs> nah, I'm used to it, man. It's just, uh, I, you know, I don't get fired up about that stuff anymore. We're on a great network here, you know. We're on great networks all around the world. The UK has been tough, and, you know, listen, we're, we're busting that stuff. The UK fans bitch about everything over there. We're busting our ass over there. I mean, we're, we, we, we have an office there. We've got an office there for years, right? Kit cranking over there trying to make this thing happen. I mean, I, I don't know what else we can do. Except storm sky and porches, and you know, and like, you know, overthrow, you know. Huh? Would you say? I know. 
I know, but the guy who runs it over there, you know, has uh, kicked ass with that business. You know, he, 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 you know, he makes a lot of money over there, meaning he makes a lot of money for the company. They're not going to go in and override Basically what happened. You know, it would be like, uh, it would be like me not wanting to do something. I was absolutely opposed to doing something. The people at my company trying to tell me, no, you're going to do it. You understand what I'm saying? What happened? So, what are you going to do? We do the best we can do over there. We've we got an office there. We're spending shitloads of money in that market. We keep bringing live fights there. We keep trying to get the best TV deals we can get. And uh, that's all we can do. Cool. Thank you guys. Thanks,